This is Tom Bernanke. And do you have skin tags on your eyelids, in your armpits, in your skin folds? I'm gonna tell you whether this is skin tag, a wart, something dangerous. We're gonna tell you about the deep underlying cause, the big secret, and how to fix these things at home. And we're starting right now. Skin tags can be a very scary thing. They can be very common, but I'm gonna tell you the big underlying secret to these, and we're also going to tell you all the tips and tricks to start taking care of these at home. Hey, you can come see a doctor like us, and it's fairly easy to take care of these, but you wanna make sure you get to the underlying cause and fix these things because they can indicate a lot of bigger problems that you should be more concerned about rather than just these skin tags. What causes a skin tag? It has some genetic components in a small percentage of people. If your mom and dad had them, you're a little bit more likely to have them. There are some links to a virus called HPV. There is a questionable concern here. It's not the biggest cause, it's a smaller cause. What HPV does cause is warts. Sometimes skin tags and warts can be confused. I see a lot of warts. Warts are a little bit longer to take care of. This is an extremely important chart a callus, a corn, and a wart versus skin tag. So a callus gets created due to wide pressure. A corn is very specific focused pressure on a sweat gland, and a wart is the HPV virus. So on the left-hand side, you could see a callus is a wide, broad, flat surface. In the middle, a corn is a very specific, hard, rock-like substance, and a wart on the right steals your blood vessels because it's a foreign body, a foreign virus that's invading your body and stealing your blood flow. So this is what they look like. Flat and wide on the left is a callus. Central painful pit is a corn. And on the right-hand side is the pinpoint blood vessels of a wart. That's how you tell the three apart. A skin tag, on the other hand, is very raised. It's barely connected to the skin, a very thin stalk, as you can see in these ones right here, or it can get huge. If you see it get this big, probably a little bit more concerning, and I'm gonna go over the skin cancer rules at the end, so very important to watch that. But you can see it's a normal stalk that connects to the skin, and the consistency of the skin looks similar on the cross section, but it can be pigmented or discolored. So right here, a callus is on big, widespread pressure areas. A corn is in very specific focused areas, usually like the toes or underneath the toe joints. And a wart, you can see those pinpoint black or red spots in the middle, which show that there's blood vessels as I showed in that picture before. Skin tags on the other hand, neck, eyelids, armpits, the skin folds, and it's usually with the symptoms I'm gonna talk about. But if you wanna learn about foot, corns, calluses, and warts and how to take care of those, I have specific guides down below, so make sure you check those out. If you guys are in Michigan or close by, come see us, the links are down below. Skin tags are a little bit easier. You still wanna to get to the root cause of skin tags is the moral of this story. Before we get to the most common cause, what is this? The fancy name for this, the medical name is called an acrocodone, is the fancy medical name for this. The good news is it's not cancerous, but removing skin tags does not remove what caused them in the first place. What's a cancerous versus non-cancerous lesion? These skin tags are benign lesions. A cancerous tumor is an out of control cell that's rapidly dividing. It can be localized, but it can spread to the rest of your body. These are not that. I'm gonna go over why you sometimes wanna see a doctor and in which cases anything can become cancerous, even though this is fairly rare. They usually occur in the folds of the skin, the neck, lots of places, in the armpits, they're very common. Here's the big secret. Skin tags grow because of metabolic syndrome and activity. This is strongly associated with type two diabetes metabolic syndrome, obesity, and this is all because these lead to insulin resistance. As your body tries to put more insulin into your bloodstream, it's not as effective for certain cells in your body to take up the blood sugar. That's essentially how type two diabetes develops. Skin tags are related to this because those metabolic pathways lead to hyperactivity. So the skin just continues to develop and eventually they develop these skin tags. The specific reason has to do with your mitochondria. The insulin 
has a dysfunction with your mitochondria, not only does that cause energy problems, but it causes things like these skin folds to develop. Really, the true cause of these skin folds is too much processed foods, too much carbohydrates, too much simple sugars. And we have some great videos. If you're getting these skin tags, if you have type two diabetes, we have a video titled 90% of diabetes would be fixed if you ate these foods. And that's completely free down below. You don't have to buy any products. It's easy to do this stuff. And I wanna hear in the comments, as you guys start eating less sugar and doing better, you start fasting, you start getting on keto diets, do your skin tags disappear? The studies aren't very clear, but it seems like this is the answer that most people say. Tell us down below, as you get healthier, are your skin tags disappearing? I think they do in the cases that I put that down in the comments if that helped you. I'm very curious to know. Some studies say there might be a viral component and might be genetic, but again, it's a smaller amount of cases. Skin tags are more common in women. They're more common with higher levels of estrogen and having more fat in women can create more estrogen. And there's a higher risk of these problems developing like PCOS, diabetes, diabetes resistance, insulin resistance. That's the real cause of these problems, cider vinegar. When do you wanna see the doctor? There's a method called A, B, C, D, E. And basically when we look at skin lesions, and I'm gonna go over this in a second, we can use this to tell whether it's cancerous or not. So I'm gonna talk about something important to me. I love Dr. Ken Berry, and he has a great book, which I'm gonna show in a second, but he basically railed on some of the dermatology societies for grading everything as a cancer, scaring everybody as a cancer. The truth is, it's probably a lot less than we're led to believe. And he goes over this in his excellent book, Lies My Doctor Told Me. And I'm gonna go over this in a second, but what happened to him was the medical societies went after him, the people who make a lot of money making surgery dollars, they all went after him and essentially they find him, the medical societies came after him, but everything he said is rooted in scientific studies. So you guys go on PubMed, research this stuff yourself, see who's telling the truth or not, because the reality is medicine is led by dollars and a lot of decision-making is influenced by dollars. So I'm gonna bust my butt to get you the real studies and the truth and not stuff just rooted in money. That's why it's so important you share channels like this and Dr. Barry's channels and get real true sources and not people just after it for the money. So here is the A, B, C, D, E's. This is how doctors generally screen what's dangerous and what should be worked up more and what can safely be left for later because there's three types of cancer. There's a basal cell carcinoma, which is kind of like the big veiny one. They're the least dangerous, least likely to cause a problem. There's a squamous cell carcinoma, which is kind of in the middle. It's definitely dangerous, should be biopsied and a melanoma, which is the most dangerous. All three should be biopsied. If all three basically meet at least a few of the ABCDE criteria, then you should biopsy with your dermatologist or podiatrist if it's on your foot. So what happens with all of these in general is they go through the skin. So if they're just in the most superficial layers of skin, there's absolutely no danger. They could stay there for like 20 plus years, which is the case with like say most basal cell carcinomas. But when you start getting into your stage one, stage two, and more, this is most common with melanomas. So melanomas are the ones known for getting down into the skin. So those are those black plaques. And this can happen under your toenail. This could happen on your foot. It can happen on your face. Now, some studies show that it's not necessarily more common in people exposed to sunlight. And that's kind of what Dr. Ken Berry was talking about. And there's a whole rabbit hole you could go down there. So I'm gonna leave that alone because I'm not an expert in that area specifically. But what is very important here are the A, B, C, D, E's. Here's how you can do it at home. So A stands for asymmetric. If it's not circular, like a freckle, that's kind of like a suspicious point there. So it should be pretty circular, the border. Is it a smooth border or is it irregular? poorly defined, scalloped. The more poorly defined the border is, the more danger it is. Color, is the color consistent? So for example, a freckle so far is round, has a regular sharp border. Whereas the color here, see how it's a little bit darker in the middle? So sometimes these could be bleeding, sometimes they could be like 
black, blue, discolored, red, white, and then next is diameter. So that's the D. Usually melanomas are greater than six millimeters. I usually say a pencil head eraser or then evolving. So when a doctor tells you to keep an eye on it, that usually means they're not worried. But if it say grows a little bit and you're like, hey, this clearly grew in like a month, definitely get it biopsied. So in a podiatry office or most family practice offices, if there was a concern, you could take a small little sample. You know, obviously if it's a huge melanoma or something, what I would do at that standpoint is send it off to a cancer specialist. So here's what the major advances are now that a plastic surgeon can do for you. If you have a big suspicious cancerous lesions that's been confirmed to be cancerous, step one, you cut out most of it in the operating room and you take a sample. The pathologist will tell you if there's any left. So then you cut out some more, but not a ton more. And then you take another sample. The pathologist tells you, hey, you got it all or there's still some left. So you keep cutting in smaller little pieces until you know you have it all. It takes uh, like an hour or so, so you can go out in the waiting room, and once your sample comes back, you could either know that you can go home safely, that you 100% got it all, or you have to go back in and take a little bit more. That's what most surgery is. You're here for the remedies. This is a countdown from the worst to the best remedies. And a little tip is surgery fixes it overnight. Remedies can take a little bit longer, although ideally they're pretty quick. With all these, you wanna take a Q-tip. You wanna clean out the area with alcohol. Number one is tea tree oil. Tea tree oil has antiviral and antifungal properties. I go over this a lot for my nail videos and my athlete's foot videos. Tea tree oil can work very well. You can dilute it, but just stick a Q-tip in there and just stick it on your skin tag. First, wash the area, use that Q-tip, place it a Band-Aid overnight after you apply the tea tree oil. And for several nights in a row, the skin tag usually dries out and falls off. Another fun trick is a banana peel. Don't toss away your old banana peels, especially if you have a skin tag. The peel of the banana can help dry out the skin. This might be partly due to the antioxidant properties found in them. Just take a Band-Aid, or some tape and take a little piece of banana peel. So I'd use some scissors, cut a little piece out, tape it over your skin tag, and do this every night when you go to sleep until the skin tag falls off. Apple cider vinegar, clean off the skin, take a Q-tip, put this apple cider vinegar on the skin tag, and basically that skin tag falls off. Only do 15 to 30 minutes. So while you're watching Netflix episode or something, take a little bit of apple cider vinegar, put a Band-Aid, and repeat this for a couple of weeks the skin tag gradually does fall off. The idea here is the acidity of the apple cider vinegar removes the skin tag. There's another combo that another doctor, Dr. Berg, uses here, but he recommends iodine and garlic extract. So just crush up some garlic, put some povidone iodone, but realistically, that's probably not something most people have at home. Most people have apple cider vinegar. Most people have a banana peel. That stuff works really well. Tea tree oil can be a little bit more expensive. But essentially, this can take a couple of weeks. It can happen quickly where the skin tag dries out and falls off, but it can take longer. Number two is skin tags are different than warts. There's some connection with HPV for skin tags, but warts are pretty much always associated with HPV. I have a long video on how to tell apart your warts, but essentially warts are a lot harder. I see most cases go away before they come visit me, but sometimes we have to trim them with a scalpel and apply some medication like cryofreeze, like acid. These can work extremely well, especially when they're on their foot or their fingertips. For both warts and skin tags, you can buy cryotherapy kits and acid at the drugstore. I put some links down below for some great kits if you don't wanna do the actual home remedies. For warts and for your skin tags, you can use some of these remedies. They work fairly well. And the original remedies can work well for warts too, especially like the apple cider. The big secret to summarize this is, the more your weight's up, the more your insulin resistance is up, that's what really causes these skin tags. As your weight gets down, as your metabolic syndrome gets improved, as your insulin resistance decreases, your skin tags in most cases will disappear completely on their own. Don't just keep going to the doctor for the rest of your life getting us to remove those skin tags. Make sure they stay away and use it as an opportunity to get healthier for the rest of your life. So if that helped, I have a lot of great wart videos. So if you have corns, calluses, warts versus skin tags, Here's the videos on how to take care of that. And here's the video on diabetic insulin resistance and how to take care of that.